Welcome to Storytime with Brad. Here's our next episode. We always um, start with some wonderful little prop, and usually we have lightsabers and Legos and things like that, but today we have this. Just this. This is a compass. It will always, always point north. So it'll tell you where to go, like a north star. And some people live their lives by calendars. Others live their lives by a compass. And you're gonna see why this compass, or really this north star, is so important. Because today we are reading. I'm Harry Tubman. Now, usually we make a lot of jokes when we dress up in costume. This is a really, really important story. So we want to give it all the uh, beautiful attention it deserves. So you ready for this one? This is one of the strongest, most amazing superheroes you're ever going to meet. Her name is Harriet Tubman. By my favorite author, Brad Meltzer. Illustrated by the best artist, Chris Eliopoulos. Here we go. I am Harry Tubman. And it begins. I am Harry Tubman. Do you know what the North Star is? It's one of the brightest stars in the sky. Unlike other stars, which may seem to move, the North Star always stays where it is. When you find it, it'll show you which way is north. Today, people know my name is Harriet Tubman, but when I was born, I was called Araminta or Minty. I was the fifth of nine children born in Maryland around 1822, and they said, when's your birthday? I don't know. How can you not know your own birthday? It's because I was enslaved. Back when I was growing up in certain parts of the country, if you were black, you were most likely enslaved. We didn't have a choice. Being enslaved meant we were forced to work without pay. We were treated terribly. Someone cuts their hand. I don't care, keep working. Can we have water? Nope, keep going. We lived in tiny shacks with no windows. We slept on the floor or in boxes filled with straw. As kids, we had to wear sacks and they certainly didn't celebrate our birthdays or keep records of when we were born. Worst of all, being enslaved meant we were property, no different from a horse or a piece of furniture. That meant my family, my mom and dad included, was owned by someone else. They could sell us, and they did. She says, where are my sisters going? Our owner sold them. They'll have new owners now. Please, mama, please don't let them take us. Slaves were supposed to do what our owners told us to. The next time they came, though, my mother was ready. Someone wanted to buy my younger brother. She had asked other slaves to help her hide my brother in the woods for nearly a month. But eventually, they found him. We're here for your boy, they said. She said, you can't have him there. What'd you say? You heard me. The, man, the first man that comes into my house, I will hit him square in the head. It was a powerful moment, my mother standing up to those men. Was it dangerous? Definitely. But it was right. After that, they didn't sell my brother. As early as I can remember, I love listening to my mother tell stories. She taught me some of life's most important lessons. Being enslaved, it was against the law for us to read or write. But she told me stories from the Bible, including the tale of... Moses, he was the leader of the Israelites. He led them out of slavery to freedom. Freedom from slavery, huh? I like this story. When I was around six years old, it was my turn to start working. I still live with my family, but my owners hired me out to another farm. He says, you see that water? We set traps from muskrats in there. Get in there and see if we caught any. She says, but the water, it, it's freezing. You talking back to me? You get in that water or else. What would happen if we didn't do what they said? Our owners would whip us or worse. I know it's scary, but by hearing my story, I hope you'll find strength you never knew you had. That's what happened when I was around seven years old. I was working in my owner's house and went to grab a lump of sugar from a nearby bowl. I never tasted sugar before. It looked so good. How dare you touch my sugar, she asked. She reached for something to hit me with. I ran as fast as I could. <laughs> when I got to someone else's farm, I hid in their pig pen. That's how scared I was. For five days, I stayed there, hiding in the mud, fighting the pigs for potato peelings and scraps of food. Eventually, I was starving and came back. When I did, they beat me. But now people started to realize I wasn't afraid to protect myself. By the time I was 12, I was working outdoors every day where the hardest work was done. I hoed and harvested and lifted heavy barrels of flour. I got so strong, was chopping so much wood, even the men could barely keep up. How much did she chop? Half a cord. Girls can't do that much. You tell her that. Working in the fields gave me more than physical strength. 
It gave me time to learn from other enslaved people, time to consider new ideas. Did you hear, he says? Three slaves escaped from the Brodus plantation. Escaped? They went up north, out of Maryland, where slavery is illegal. Up there, everyone's free, just like we should be. During that time, I spent many nights looking at the sky. My father was the one who taught me about the North Star. It always points north. That's where black people are free, right? In the north? Exactly. Follow the North Star, and you'll always know you're headed in the right direction. Since slavery was so terrible, you may be wondering why we didn't all run away. It was nearly impossible. One night, while doing errands at a nearby store, I saw an enslaved man who had left his farm without permission. Grab him! He belongs to me! I could have stopped the man from running, but I refused to. Enraged, a supervisor from the farm picked up a heavy weight aiming for the slave. It hit me instead. Hard. I got knocked out. It was an injury that forever changed my life. Since I didn't die, I decided God had a plan for me and was guiding and protecting me. After my injury, I started having vivid dreams. I'd be flying like a bird over fields and towns, over rivers and mountains. In the air, I'd reach a great fence, and on the other side would be a big, beautiful field. But each time, no matter how hard I tried, I could never get over that line. When I was around 22, I got married and got rid of my childhood name. Now, I was Harriet Tubman. Soon after, I found out that I was about to be sold. What should we do, Harriet? Our new owner may be even meaner than this one. Someone else who could take me from my family and hurt me? I knew there was only one choice. I must escape. My brothers and I planned to escape, but they got scared and turned back. So I went all by myself. I traveled by night following the North Star, just like my father had taught me. This is the way. It'll always lead me right. I stayed in the houses of people who wanted to help us find freedom. She says, there are slave hunters all over. Wear these men's clothes so no one will recognize you. You're saving my life. I was now traveling on what was called the Underground Railroad. It wasn't a real railroad. It didn't have tracks or train cars, and it didn't go underground. It was people who didn't like slavery secretly helping people escaping from slavery. But it did have special stations, safe hiding places, run by black and white helpers we call conductors. It even had its own signals. The password for the next safe house is a hoot sound like an owl. Use that and it'll give you a place to sleep. He says, thank you for protecting me. On the Underground Railroad, we were safe. Eventually, I made it to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Slavery was illegal there. I was free now, no longer enslaved. Soon, I had a regular job cleaning and cooking and a regular place to live. I could have stayed there forever. But then I got news from where I used to live in Maryland. One of your nieces and her family, they're about to be sold to a new owner. What should we do? The answer was obvious. I need to go back to help them escape too. That's exactly what I did. A year after I escaped, I snuck back into Maryland. Thanks to my own trip on the Underground Railroad, I knew people who would help us. We can hide them in here. When it's dark, we'll sneak them onto a boat, get them out of the state. And she says, he says, Harriet, you sure this is smart? If you get caught helping them, they'll sell you back into slavery. You'll lose your freedom and everything you have. No question, it wasn't safe, but it was right. In a daring escape, we snuck my niece and her family to the closest city, Baltimore, Maryland. Follow me. Then out of the state to Philadelphia. So we're free now? We're not slaves anymore? You're free. They were the first people I rescued, but they certainly weren't the last. On my next trip back to Maryland, I helped free my youngest brother, whose name was Moses, as well as two other men. You're, the way you're leading people of freedom, you sure I shouldn't be calling you Moses? After that, I made another rescue trip and another. I rescued family and friends. On the Underground Railroad, we used hiding places like attics, potato cellars, and barns. Some folks even built secret tunnels and hidden rooms like this fake closet. In here, you'll be safe. Come on, follow me. I also continued wearing disguises. Why are you dressed like an old lady? So no one's going to recognize me. Put this on. We're going to get you out of here. Follow me. That woman, she's saving our lives. With each trip, our Underground Railroad helped more slaves escape. Soon they started calling me the Moses of my people. Now she's the one who's leading us to freedom. It took a lot of help from members of the Underground Railroad, like John Brown, another great leader who fought so that black people could be free. I was so impressed with Harriet's skills and bravery, I started calling her General Tubman. To stay out of sight, I traveled by night sticking to the back roads. 
I also made many of my trips in the winter when people wouldn't be outside their homes. Occasionally, it was so hard to walk over the mountain passes, even the bigger and supposedly stronger men would want to stop. You sure it's safe? It looks deep. The water's cold, but you'll make it. Now hurry before anyone sees us. Follow me. I always kept them going, leading the way. On this particular night, we ran out of money, but I was so committed to keeping everyone safe that I gave away some of my own clothing, including my underwear, to pay for the place where we slept. On another trip to buy some live chickens, I spotted one of my old masters, someone I used to work for when I was enslaved. As he came near me, I pulled on a string around the chicken's legs and made them flap and scream. He was so distracted by the noise, he never realized he was this close to catching me. Over 11 years, I went back to Maryland 13 times, personally freeing around 70 people. To keep them safe, I led many of them to Canada, which is where I brought five of my siblings, my niece, and even my own parents. My family had been separated for nearly seven years. The more I fought against slavery, the more I realized that the only way to win was to end slavery itself. That chance came as the Civil War began. The northern part of the country wants to stop slavery. The south wants to keep it. At first, I took care of wounded soldiers, but soon my best talents were put to use. This is Secretary of War Edwin Stanton. Look at this information she's collected. Harriet Tubman and her spy ring are remarkable. Soon after, I became the first American woman ever to lead an armed raid into enemy territory. With the information we found, we successfully fought the southern soldiers. More important, we proved that black people could serve in the military just as well as white people. As a master spy for the North, I led groups of scouts into South Carolina to scope out what the other side was doing. Shh, this way. They won't see us coming. Follow me. Follow me. Eventually, the North won the Civil War and slavery ended, but that didn't mean my battles were over. I became a community activist. I traveled around the country talking about injustice. Did you know that after the Civil War, black soldiers were still being paid less than white soldiers? They even sent us to different hospitals and made us pay for our own uniforms. That's not fair. After the war, I was so poor I had to burn pieces of my fence for firewood. But as always, I kept battling, helping those who needed it. He says, Harriet, you had no money. Why are you inviting people into your home? They have no place to go. How can I turn them away? You're safe now, folks. Follow me. When I was nearly 90 years old, my dream of helping others grew even bigger as I established a new home in Auburn, New York for poor, old, and sick African Americans. We'll take care of you here. Here's my part, here's the part I love. In my life, I was told I couldn't make my own choices, that I would never escape, but I did. I fought for my independence, and once I had breathed the air of freedom, I knew I needed to help others breathe it too. The measure of success isn't what you achieve for yourself, it's what you do for others. Think of yourself as a bird. Some days you'll climb high, some days you'll fall. But when you pass the clouds and reach the top, you have a choice. You can stay up there and enjoy the view, or you can go back down again and bring others up to join you. Do you know that Harriet Tubman also spoke up for women's rights? She worked with Susan B. Anthony to make sure women got the right to vote. Today, there are dozens of schools named after, as well as a statue in New York, recognizing her work with the Underground Railroad. What she did wasn't easy, but it was right. I'm following her. And I'm excited that she'll be on the $20 bill, the only woman or African-American on American paper money. When you help yourself, you can fly. But when you help others, you truly soar. In every life, we face hard decisions. At those times, we can make the safe choice or the right choice. Would you put yourself at risk to help someone else? Would you stand up to someone mighty in order to help someone who is weak? To answer those questions, you must follow your heart, your own North Star. It will always point you in the right direction. I am Harriet Tubman. Follow me. I will lead the way to freedom. That is I am Harriet Tubman. And I told you, she's a superhero, risking her life, risking everything she had just to help other people. This is a crazy world we live in right now. But the reason you're watching this is to know that you have the power to be a superhero too. You may not wear a cape or utility belt, but you can help someone else. And you help one person, be kind to one person. That's the answer. Thank you for tuning in to Storytime. Keep reading, keep reading. 
and keep being kind to each other.